we are lost. Okay, that sign would suggest that there are cows somewhere. So if there are cows, there is milk. If there is milk, there is cheese. Okay, I need to give you guys some context for what you're about to see. Have you ever heard of Basilicata? I'm guessing probably not a lot of you have, but it's not your fault. Basilicata has to be one of the most overlooked regions in southern Italy. It's very small. It's between Campania and Calabria and Puglia. Probably the most famous thing about Basilicata is the city of Matera, which is frankly only famous because it's really Instagram worthy and they shot a James Bond movie there. Ava and I are guilty of overlooking this place too. We've driven through it countless times and it's the kind of thing where you see the sign entering Basilicata and in our minds we just go, oh cool, we're almost to Calabria. Well, recently we were traveling through Italy and it just happened to be a very good place to stop for the night. And the next morning we were all ready to just head back home to Calabria. But before we left, Ava remembered a, uh, a cheese, a particular particular cheese that they only make in Basilicata, and so that's where our story begins. I still have no reception whatsoever. So Arthur, here we should understand if we want to go to Fontana d'Eboli or Rimini, Riminchiello, which one do you like more? Let's, let's go that way. Paradiso. We can go to paradise. I know. I paradise mean, should not, have cheese. It's not really promising. Antica tenuta del cavaliere, agriturismo. I don't know if my car can reach 2,000 meters. I should we go? Ah, uh, yeah. I, yes, I'm. I'm as sure as I possibly can be. <laughs> what we can do? We go. Maybe we can ask. Look! No, there isn't a cow. <laughs> you thought you saw a cow? <laughs> I want this cheese so bad that I was sure that there, there was a cow. You're seeing cheese mirages now. Is there anyone here? We could ask him. We are getting lucky here because it seems that he is the owner of the place where they produce the Cacio Cavallo. That wasn't it? No, he said Contrada Paradiso, we should go to Paradise. Paradise, I told you, yes, I told you. Said, in Paradiso there is always cheese. Stiamo cercando di comprare del formaggio. Ah, sì. Formaggio, ecco. Ok, qui abbiamo cibo. Wow, it smells amazing. Eh. Oh, no, okay. E questi sono i cacio cavalli. E queste sono le varie pezze di formaggio. Poi se lo volete... Che meraviglia. Quindi ne prendiamo una che è più stagionata e un cacio cavallo. No, ma questo è buono. Ma è buono tutto. È, è, è tutto. Si sente dal profumo che è tutto buono, signora, la verità. Grazie mille. Grazie, grazie, grazie mille. Grazie. Ciao, ciao, grazie. Ok, well that was a success. Half success, Albert. Half success? Yes, because I, was, I, want to, I didn't want to be rude with them. Huh? But the caccia cavallo, we are looking for caccia cavallo podolico. It's the wrong cheese? See, no, it's the right cheese, uh, but it's not the right cows. Oh. So we need to go and look for Cacciacavallo Podolico. Oh, it looks like really good cheese. 
Sì, it's a really good cheese, but the Cacciocavallo Podolico is a very mm, interesting story. You get? I get. And now which way do we go? We're back to square one, aren't we? <laughs> so we got that way. Okay. I know that it's not on our to-do list. But what do you think if we go to this bakery? There is written Pane Caserecho. Allora, avete pane caldo? Va bene questo? Perfetto. Sì, è cotta a forma legge. Mamma mia, it's hot, it's hot. Noi stiamo cercando il cacio cavallo podolico. Dove lo troviamo? Cacio cavallo podolico, quindi avrei io un contatto dove potervi indirizzare per il podolico. We finally have cell phone reception and coordinates on where to go. One of the most amazing flower that we have in Italy. I don't know how do you call this in English. We call it ginestra. The ginestra on the mountain is very, it smells very, very good. Cioè, cioè the smell of the ginestra. Mamma mia. Oh wow, it smells really good. At the stop sign, turn right. In 3.9 miles, make a sharp right turn. In a quarter of a mile, the destination is on your right. Here I understood that uh, if you want really good stuff, you need to go in the home of people. <laughs> because there is no shop around here. Salve, buongiorno. Ci hanno detto che qui possiamo comprare del cacio cavallo. So that was interesting. First of all, um, that place, they are not legally allowed to sell cheese. Now they were ready to sell us cheese, um, but I cannot say where we were or how we found them or what their name is or anything like that. Uh, but they did not have the cacio cavallo that we're looking for. Signora, il cacio cavallo podolico. No, cacio cavallo podolico no. Non hai idea dove lo possiamo trovare. Basically, cross to the other side of Basilicata. We are going to Senise. Does that mean a bar that serves alcohol? Maybe, yes. <laughs> Instead of coffee. Oh, I think that's it. Signora, noi stiamo cercando disperatamente il cacio cavallo podone. Non c'è cavallo. Quindi quello che vede è il cacio cavallo normale. Dove lo possiamo trovare? Hai idea? It looks very good. I know. So, in my opinion, maybe we buy some of that. Then, we keep searching. Questo qui davanti? Questo? No, sì. Okay. Sì. Buona giornata. Grazie. So we're back to square one yet again. We need to find it. Oh my gosh, it is so hot. Okay, so just as we were coming out of the cheese shop, there's this bar next to, right next to it, and there were these old guys sitting out, and they saw my camera, and they were like, what are you doing? And so Ava explained that we were looking for this cheese, and they gave us an idea. 
Pace e becce. Pace e becce. Pace e becce. Potolico, cioè quello di Pace. Pace e becce. Scusa, ma lei è proprio lui è americano? No, è americano, no, americano, 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 no, americano. americano. No, perché mi sono accorto che non parla italiano. Eh. Ah, capisco un po'. Qualche ma... cosa, no? No, se ne deve mangiare. Calabrese, Calabrese lo capisce subito, assolutamente sì. Landuia, Landuia. Sì. Oh. Eh. Thank you, eh? What a match. These guys just reminded me of something and I'm gonna butt back in for just a minute. My Italian comprehension has actually gotten really good, which is how I can go on this adventure in Basilicata and understand basically everything that everyone's saying. One of my favorite ways to immerse myself in Italian and practice this language is to actually engage in foreign language content. I've always heard that this is a really great thing to do, but it can be kind of frustrating. First of all, it can be hard to find find the foreign language content that you're looking for. Also, sometimes if you're watching a TV show or a movie in a different language, they speak really fast and it's hard to hear what they're saying. That's why I am super excited to have found LingoPie. LingoPie is an amazing video on demand platform, kind of like Netflix for learning a new language. They have tons of movies and TV shows, even audiobooks, all tailored around learning a new language. But it's so much more than just a place to find foreign language content because they have a ton of features that make the experience way better. For instance, you can control the playback speed, you can make it slower so you can actually understand what people are saying. Their interactive subtitles are amazing. So for instance, while I'm watching something in Italian, I can see the subtitles in Italian, but I can like click on a word that I don't understand and it'll give me a translation. Plus the words that I click on can be used later to make flashcards and quizzes so I can practice on my own. Or you can even display both the, the foreign language subtitles and the English so you can compare the two. They have tons of amazing content and they're adding more every week. The catalog keeps growing. I've been enjoying this uh, TV show that's about barbecue. I never expected that I would be learning a new language by watching a TV show about some of my favorite food, but here we are, it's amazing. LingoPie offers a seven day free trial so you can check it out for yourself, see if you like it. If you sign up using the link down below, you will get 55% off the annual plan, more than half off. I highly recommend checking out LingoPie. I've never had so much fun learning Italian. A big thank you to LingoPie for sponsoring today's video. And they gave us an idea of where to go. Now, we've had a lot of ideas about where to go today, so I don't know how much I trust it, but at least we have a lead, we have a clue. Before we get there, we need to make a very, a very important stop. Are you sure this is a public road? I hope so. A cow. Is that a cow? That is a cow. I'm not having cheese mirage here. It's not a cow, it's a buffalo. <laughs> Mozzarella Lucana di latte di bufalo. It's a buffalo. Oh, hello. Do you make cacio cavallo? Normally our life is spent trying to avoid the cow cheeses and look for the buffalo cheese. <laughs> it's like the first time we're like, ah, buffalo, I don't want that. Where's the cows? So out of curiosity, when you're like basically in a desert and there are almost no humans around, let's just say your very, very old car were to, you know, like overheat or break down or something and it's 100 degrees out and you have a small bottle of water. Like, who, who, do you, who do you call in Italy? Is there like AAA or something? You call the Pope. The Pope? And what do you do if you have no cell phone reception whatsoever? Oh my gosh, civilization. brought me. In a gerenza. Where they make panettone. Panettone? Panettone. We drove three hours 
from one side of Basilicata to the other, through the middle of absolute nowhere, to get a Christmas panettone in July? Yes, Arpel. But this is the best panettone in Italy, which means the best panettone in the world. Tre ore in macchina <laughs> per questo. Signora, mi piace. Grazie, grazie. grazie. Ciao. Now, because a certain someone had to drive three hours for a panettone in July. The best panettone the in the world. The best panettone in the world. We basically have time for maybe one more stop today as it's getting kind of late. So fingers crossed that this place the guys told us about has the cheese we're looking for. And that place is in Potenza. I don't know where that is. I don't know what that is. Potenza. I feel a little bit like Don Quixote right now. Are you telling me that I'm Sancho Panza? No, come to think of it, you're Don Quixote. I'm Sancho Panza. Should be right here. There, Caseficio. It's not closed. It, it doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't exist. It's like totally. Is totally, totally abandoned. Okay, well, I, I kind of think we need to call it a day. Okay, first of all, do you guys like my new t-shirt? It's Basilicata. Okay, so I need to fill you in on what happened last night. So after giving up, we decided to spend the night here in Potenza, which by the way is a very lovely city. So we did what everyone does when you can't find the cheese you want. We went to a bar to drown our sorrows. By the way, here in Basilicata, they make a gin out of those Ginestra flowers. It was really good, kind of cool. Anyway, we started talking to the bartender and he was asking us like what we were doing, why we were visiting Potenza, and we told him about our search for the Cacio Cavallo Podolico. And it was so amazing because then he, he calls in the other bartender and they start talking and then they start calling in their buddies just from the street and asking them where they think we can find this cheese. Long story short, they came up with a place where they think we can find the Cacho Cavallo. Now we've gone down so many rabbit holes with this and turned up empty handed, so we're not really holding out much hope, but we have one last place to try, even if we don't find the cheese. Ultimately, I am just so impressed with the people here and how every single person we met from the first guy, that farmer on the tractor, to these bartenders last night in Potenza, every single person we met just did their absolute best to try and help us find this cheese. So whether we find anything or not, we did find something amazing, and that's the people of Basilicata. All right, but for real, let's go find this cheese. Is it? See, it's a cow. You sure it's not a buffalo? No, no, it's a cow. Oh, there's another one. Oh, Ooh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> These are the mucche podoliche. I found you at the end. <laughs> She's looking at me. Oh. 
Io sono Piacere, Eva. So. Piacere. Ciao, sono so. Harper. At the end we reach the right place. Oh. oh. It smells so good. I know, and we didn't find just one. We found a whole room full of cacio cavallo. Allora, Alessandro, perché il cacio cavallo podolico è diverso dagli altri? È diverso dalla razza di, di, di bovino che si chiama podolico. Anche perché prendiamo poco latte sulle podoliche. Perché fanno meno latte meno delle altre. Latte, molto meno latte. Più buono però di meno. Molto buono ma poco. Molto buono. Una podolica fa 5-6 litri di latte. Una vacca che sta in stalla fa 50 litri di latte. Wow. <laughs> Quella è la differenza. Ok, so this means that here we have a treasure. Just for the amount of effort we put into finding it, we have a treasure. I know. <laughs> Questo è più per passione. Non, che per l'economia in No, per l'economia in sé. Che per il guardo. Perché se uno pensa all'economia, questo non lo può fare. Eh, fa l'altro che gioca no, no, più Una facile. cosa veloce. Ho avuto molte proposte per questi canali, supermercati, che... ma... Non c'è. <ride> ma anche perché le quantità sì, sono molte limitate. Se c'erano molte quantità... Cioè, fa... da un lato però è bello, perché nel senso, chi vuole la cosa buona deve venire qua. Eh, sì. Deve venire qua. Dall'altro lato capisco che a livello economico non è... Sì. Però chi vuole la cosa buona e la capisce ci arriva qui. Grazie. Grazie, Grazie a te. Grazie mille. Grazie di tutto. Grazie Alessandro. Ciao. Ciao. I'm happy. Now we can go home. And through the power of editing we're back. With our cacio cavallo. With our cheese that we traveled far and wide Actually, not that far and wide because Basilicata is a, a small. small region. But it takes forever to get around there. My goodness. How, how, how should we cut this? This way? Yes, it's so like usually you cut a piece like that. All right. What if it's just Velveeta inside? I can smell. It's like I can smell. Vroom. Vroom. Look. Oh. Look. It's a painting. It is a painting. Wow. That doesn't. Wow. It's something that uh, you can't describe. That is like the platonic ideal of what a cheese should smell like. <laughs> Oh, don't you dare eat that without me. Arpel. Buon, Buon appetito. appetito. Wow. 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 Because those cows, that they are so beautiful, they make, uh, they produce the best milk of all of Italy. You know, that's kind of how Basilicata is though. It might be small, it might not produce a lot, but what it does produce is it, excellent. It's over the top. Guys, we hope you enjoyed our little adventure in Basilicata. Highly recommend checking out the region. It's pretty awesome. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action who made Grissini, the real homemade Italian breadsticks. They look fan freaking tastic. And for sure, they are also a good pair with our cheese. That's a good idea. Big thanks to all of the amazing people we met in Basilicata. Truly, they, we have never experienced so many people trying to help us and being so welcoming to us. It was just amazing. A very special thank you to Alessandro. Yes. <laughs> bravo Alessandro, bravo, bravo, bravo. Absolutely. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow us on social media, at Pasta Grammar, and we'll see you next time. Ciao. Happy Christmas. <laughs> Happy Christmas. <laughs> Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. <laughs>